This is the Transformers movie masterpiece or masterpiece movie series. Transformers Bumblebee movie. Bumblebee MPM7. Here's a look at the packaging. Very nice. I picked up this figure at Our Toys. And if you want a comparison with the packaging of the Mo Masterpiece movie series, uh, Chevrolet Camaro Bumblebee, MPM3 Bumblebee. Here are the boxes together. And here is MPM7 Bumblebee out of packaging. And he looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the Masterpiece movie series line does not disappoint. I mean, the entire Masterpiece line is absolutely amazing, but the movie series Masterpiece lines, oh my goodness. Truly, they do not disappoint, and it is what you'd expect it to be of any Masterpiece Transformers figure. Okay. Uh, he comes with a very nice, intricate set of instructions, and it's very detailed, it's colored, and so as you can see, I've already mounted his uh, gun, his blaster. It clips on either hand, but I guess it works best with the right hand, because we always see him using it in his right, right arm or right hand. He also comes with his stinger blade which you can also mount on either forearm, which looks really, really nice. And he comes with an alternate battle mask. Uh, a little bit disappointed that it does not come within the head sculpt, but again, just the intricate detail of the head sculpt. I mean, this is gonna be very difficult to incorporate in the head without making the head look huge. To connect the battle mask, what you do is you pop open his forehead like that slide out the uh, regular headpiece and you can slide in the battle mask right there and there you go he's ready for action and I'm just so surprised at how much they've put into that mask uh, they have some clear plastic right there they've got nice sculpting here and there yellow paint the the brow uh, has been painted in a little bit brighter yellow than the yellow plastic, but that's fine. But it looks great. Now, if you're not using the battle mask, uh, the mask will store nicely right here on the back of the uh, wings. There's a peg right there. You can store it here or store it there. The stinger, which I've mentioned, you can also mount on the, on the other arm, has a small little peg right here which you can mount right, store at the back, one of the wings, right there. Blaster's a little bit tricky. Now the instructions say that the thumb should be out, like that, that last digit of the thumb should be out, because that's probably the easiest way to connect it. But I found a way, if you can sneak that thumb right in to that chamber of the gun, it w looks much better. It's a cleaner uh, looking blaster. And the way it comes is you just pop it off like that. The fingers sort of slide in there. Now, the easier way is to just stick out that thumb and, yeah, there. But uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's a lot neater if you find a way to just sneak that thumb right in there. Uh, a little bit tricky, but it is possible. Then you just tab that Gatling gun or blaster right there. This particular blaster will fit nicely right here. There, so you can have everything stored on the back of Bumblebee. Articulation, the head is on a very nice ball joint. There's a waist swivel. The arms go in and out, forward and backward. No ratchets, amazingly. Elbow has a ball hinge joint. The wrist, uh, swivel wrist. The fingers are articulated. There's the thumb swivels in and out and has the last digit hinge. The each finger, each of the three other fingers can move independently, but only the index finger has that last digit articulation. Okay. 
hips are on ball joint and there you go there we have the ratcheting joint forward and backward but sidewards does not have ratchet hinge knee it goes a little bit way too forward maybe because of transformation there's a thigh swivel and then for ankle articulation the ankle can go sidewards a little bit up and down okay now you'll also notice there are some die cast pieces here the foot is die cast that bit of the ankle is die cast uh, the these parts of the torso are die cast and that middle piece is also die cast another feature that he has is when you lift a little bit spoilerish I suppose he's got some hidden rockets uh, on his chest and for size comparisons um, here he here is the MPM 7 with the other masterpiece bumblebee figures we've gotten this is the 10th year anniversary movie bumblebee masterpiece figure by Takara Tomi and Hasbro as well as you can see he's all grown up here <laughs> he was still a kid right here I suppose and uh, this is the G1 uh, version of the masterpiece Bumblebee. Obviously, it's going to be much smaller. And just for comparison's sake, here is the Studio Series Deluxe Class Bumblebee figure uh, from the movie as well. Uh, it's a great size. Uh, I thought he was going to be much smaller than the uh, Camaro Bumblebee. Uh, he's, he's right there. And here is MPM7 Bumblebee in his Volkswagen Beetle Alt mode. Kind of rolls okay. Uh, there's a very, very thin, very small amount of clearance from all his robot parts to the ground. And I reckon it's like half a millimeter just above the ground. It just clears it enough so you can roll him smoothly. And he looks fantastic in alt mode. Uh, you get that uh, graded color, orange and yellow paint job. Uh, on looking at the details of the car, you get this bumper. Yeah, it's plain flat gray. You get some headlamps. I love the headlamps, some clear. Uh, it's not clear. It's a mix of clear plastic and silver paint. So I really like that. Uh, turning lights and uh have door handles nice some blue bluishly tinted windows so nice uh volkswagen logo on the um the hubcaps tires taillights clear plastic very nice i mean overall they nailed the details in alt mode one thing i wanted to point out was in the trailer, if you see um, Charlie looking underneath the car, trying to fix it, Bumblebee's head should be facing down, but instead it, Bumblebee's head is facing forward. So I don't know how accurate that is. Maybe a little bit of lack of accuracy there, but it's not a deal breaker. I mean, that's the best place to store that head uh, in, in alt mode, okay? Now the accessories, you can also store them in alt mode by combining them. And there are two holes on the blaster, and those plug in to the tailpipes or the exhaust pipes. And excuse me, and there it sort of hangs off eerily at the back, like some trailer hitch or whatever. Here he is with the 207 Camaro. So, yeah, definitely an upgrade. From his previous uh, model. Yeah. Amazingly, they're about the same length. From bumper to bumper, he is just a little over six inches long. Just six inches long. I thought he would be much smaller uh, in alt mode. Masterpiece Bumblebee, the G1 version. Beetle. Yeah, obviously, he'll be smaller because he's in scale with the other masterpiece figures. Here is the Studio Series Bumblebee. Very nice, very nice indeed. And now on to the dreaded task of transforming MPM 7 Bumblebee. So whatever nice stuff, nice things I said about this instruction sheet, I take it all back. This instruction sheet is absolutely worthless. Believe me when I say that you are better off discovering how to transform this figure on your own maybe you can use the instruction sheet as a guide as to the specific 
positions you you will need to get the figure in but um in, in terms of step-by-step -step instructions it's absolutely worthless i had a difficult time i did not have the most pleasant time transforming this figure using the instructions so difficulty level of instruct of transforming is incredibly difficult for some reason i mean it's such a small figure and you if you thought mp5 megatron was difficult well, you got another thing going. I mean, this is one of the most difficult Masterpiece Transformers to transform. This is the position you want to get him in before you transform. Let's do the small steps first, which you easy to forget. Uh, fold up those two die cast pieces. Now, these two small pieces, you'll need to fold them up. But to do that, you have to detach uh, these di di small die cast pieces right here. Fold them down like that. And down like that. Then you're going to want to push this one up like that. Okay. Okay, that's done. That's the easy part. <laughs> okay. Then what you want to do is detach these two pieces. Fold the rear bumper all the way to the back like that. And then go ahead and fold these out. There's a, there's a double hinge right here. You swivel that one out. That is very important. All right. Fold out the wheels there keep these like that at an angle okay you should be okay all right fold the heel spurs up or to the side okay go ahead and fold it this way fold the entire assembly this way okay uh, fold it that way all right and then go ahead and fold the feet this way these are just gonna go like that like that and then you're gonna want to swivel this joint right here swivel it like that and then swivel this other joint like that The whole idea is to bring these two, the toes together, like that. You should be able to tab them together. But uh, the these pieces are not exactly cooperating. Uh, okay, that way. They should be able to join them together that way. Okay, all right, and then have these and there's a small small peg right there which that annoys the heck out of me and because over time those things they love to break off once the plastic softens due to depreciation so just tab everything nicely in like that and fold here like that and it's gonna stay like that for now okay that's the easy part okay make sure you tab flat there's a very small clearance for the wheels. That's the easy part. Okay, now on to this bigger chunk right here. So the arms at a 45 degree angle, that's the best position I know. So, um, okay, let's do the, the wings first since those are, that's the easiest part, it's the easier part. Okay, do that, do that, do that. This one, fold it here, amazingly, in the last 10 years, the Bumblebee, transformation of Bumblebee tra uh, figures have not changed a lot. I mean, they've evolved to here and there, but most of the transformation seems to be the same. Okay, go ahead and do this, and this, and this, and just get it out of the way. Okay. Now the bumper, the bumper is going to pop off the first time you do it. It's going to pop off like that because it's, it's the hinges are very tight, but uh, and and the and the plastic is very soft. It connects it, so that's fine. In fact, if if it's very difficult, you can just pop off the whole bumper and just unfold this one like that and pop it back right in. So that's fine. Okay. Then what you want to do is do this and this. He's got fake bumpers. He has real chest, but uh, the bumpers are fake here because these, these are the bumpers in alt mode. So I guess he's got fake 
fake bumpers, okay. All right, um, the head assembly, go ahead and do this. Stretch it out all the way up like this. Go ahead and fold that there. And then fold the head assembly like that. All the way up. Because you're going to need as much clearance as you can because it's very tight. The wheels are going to scrape. They, they're going to scrape when you're trying to roll the figure. Okay, uh, so far, so good. Okay. Uh, try not to move too much of the pieces because you're going to get them misaligned. It's going to be uh, difficult to get them together. Okay, uh, let's do the arms. So the arms, I hope I didn't move them too much. Fold this, fold this. Is it still 45 degrees? Perhaps. Okay. Go ahead and fold these panels up like that. You already know it's going to be a mess when this, when one particular panel, the middle panel, is going to be surrounded right here by a ton of other panels. It's, it's already you already can already feel it's going to be crazy. So, okay, fold, rotate this way, rotate this way. Untab, untab, rotate downward this way. Okay, same thing here. And then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and fold it here, much like the old uh, movie verse uh, Bumblebee figures. And then you're gonna fold. Not don't bend that shoulder hinge yet. Just bend. You need to bend this black hinge right here and snap it. Snap it right there. You're gonna. There's like a like a trench right there, or sort of like a notch. Well, you have to just fold that whole black piece right there. Okay. Sorry. Fold it all the way right there. And you do the same on the other side. Very important to do that. If you don't do that, the angle of the shoulders folding into uh, the legs is going to be. It's going to be off, and then you're going to have a difficult time closing everything in. Okay. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Now you need to tab the shoulders right there. Right there. Okay. So make sure everything's bent and everything's straightened out. So far, so good. Okay, and then these are just gonna go over here, like that. Okay. Okay. These will go here. That whole wing assembly. Okay, the die cast piece right here. You're gonna swivel it upwards like that. Make sure it's perpendicular. It's a 90 degree swivel, like that, okay. All right, and then go ahead and fold this down, like that. So you're gonna fold this one down all the way here, all right. And then you might not want to clip the, the instructions say to clip it all the way back there and form that part of the hood or part of the front bumper or the grill or whatever, but you're gonna need some clearance to fit this piece right in there. So just keep it at bay like that, okay? And then you're gonna to want to fold this one in like that, like sort of shoot it in, like that, and then fold. Okay, once you've somehow managed to connect these two pieces, the fender pieces there to the side, I'm gonna go ahead and fold. <laughs> I don't know how I even did it. I'm gonna go ahead and fold the bonnet on top of those fender pieces. And then you're gonna to want to squeeze the headlamp pieces right there. I'm already sweating buckets just doing this part of the transformation. Okay. All right, like that. Now that bumper that flew away, <laughs> you can still find it. Like that. Okay. So just making 
sure things are in. Okay, so that's that. And now the last P thing you want to do is, as you can see, you need to close this thing here, fit all those panels in right there, right there, tab this piece right there, okay? Tab these in like that. Okay, all right, that's that. And then this one, I'm gonna just collapse it like that. Make sure that tab is right there. Easier said than done. Okay. Then, oh my goodness. Really? Really? Takara told me Hasbro? I guarantee, you know, most of the reviewers for this particular figure are going to transform him from alt mode to robot mode. Nobody, heart, I don't know, I can only, I can only imagine how anyone would want to transform him from robot mode to alt mode except me. <laughs> so, you know, most of the reviewers for this figure are going to go alt, alt mode into robot mode because that's the easier way to do it. So... But robot mode to alt mode, only a handful of us will do it. Maybe one or two, just a couple, I guess. Me included. Okay, and then this is probably the hardest tabs, the hardest pieces to tab in. And then because you got to do that, that, and that. Oh, yeah, that wasn't so hard. First time I did it, oh, my God, those were like pegs of doom. And I could not get it in. Okay. And there you go. So final thoughts on this figure. Great robot mode. The alt mode looks fantastic. They're great display pieces, but horrible, horrible torture transformation. Uh, I, 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 I just have no words to put it. I, I honestly thought there were other masterpiece figures that would like, you know, Cheetor, MP5 Megatron that were difficult, but this one takes the cake. I think this is by far one of the more difficult, if not the most difficult masterpiece Transformers uh, to transform. Definitely the most difficult movie masterpiece to transform. I did not have fun transforming it. Um, it simply is a display piece. It's fun to play with in robot mode, but not transforming it back and forth. It is simply a chore, a tedious endeavor, and I, I it's something I do not want to keep doing. Okay, um, so this figure I picked up. I got R Toys, and it set me back about a hundred dollars, or nine, you know, um, about ninety-five to a hundred dollars, uh, and that's. That's a good price. It's probably the price that it's going for nowadays, uh, about eighty to hundred dollars, ninety to hundred dollars. And um, well, in terms of the detail and articulation, uh, artic and 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 um, engineering, articulation and all that, the features it has, I guess it's worth it. But unless you are an absolute movie Bumblebee fan, and you love the movie masterpiece line, I would caution. Uh, on getting this figure right away. Uh, you might want to wait for a price discount or on a fellow collector to pass it on. But uh, as it is, unless you are an absolute diehard, hardcore movie Bumblebee fan, then this might not be the figure for you. But if you're a big fan of the movie Bumblebee, definitely. Um, it's a welcome addition to your collection. You just have to get around, get over that uh, transformation uh, from robot to alt mode. But other than that, uh, the figure, the figure is great. Uh, I just wish they would have had it made, given us an easier time with the transformation. I mean, there could have been some engineering modifications here and there that could have moved the panel here and there, some clearance here and there. But uh, as it is, wow, that transformation is going to bring down the points um, for this figure. Um, it's going to get a, I want to say a seven and a half, but. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give it an eight, okay? Normally I would give these guys like a 10 out of 10, but uh, it's gonna get a seven and a half, eight out of 10 for me, simply because of that horrible transformation. So there you go, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this little video review. This has been 
The Transformers Masterpiece Movie Series, MPM 7, Bumblebee from the new Transformers Bumblebee movie. Thanks for watching.